It's Fate Time! Hello and welcome to another Figure Review. Today we're going to have a look at the Figma number 521 in the DX version. It's Saber Okita Soji in the Ascension version. Oh my god, it's finally time for some more Fate and some more Saber. This design is absolutely lovely. She still has kind of like the ultra face, but you know, the entire outfit is a lot more... Uh, samurai style, a lot more ninja style, and she does have like a cloth outfit. Wow, let's have a look at it. By the way, this is like DX, this is the DX slider you've been looking at all this time, but you have your classic standard Figma box with the window, some stuff on the side, some artwork. Well, not really artwork, it's actually just pictures of the figure. So, let's get into it. And here we go. This figure stands at about 13 or a little over 13 centimeters to the top of the head, which means we are going up to 5.2 inches tall. Size comparisons. Here's Jolter, Saber Altria, Saber Nero, Neca Michelangelo, Neca Goliath, and Darkseid. Overall look in detail, as I already mentioned, the uh, overall design of the character looks a lot like Altria or King Alpha or whatever you want to call it. And obviously the rest of the design is Japanese clothing, a lot more like traditional old school Japanese clothing, which uh, it's fairly minimal, but uh, it does have its charm, which I can just say, say, say the same about the face sculpt. She has a lovely smile on there and the eyes are just like perfectly printed on there. There's no issues with that. There's a nice amount of detail in the hair. You got a small ribbon in the back with the one ponytail. The scarf, like the one thing that's kind of off-putting about the scarf is like this, this dongle over here, which is kind of hanging off. It is to connect the scarf to the pack in the back, which uh, you usually use for the Figma base. But why is it hanging off like that? That's just kind of weird. For the rest of the scarf, it is nice and wavy. Has um, just kind of it's kind of cut up at the uh, bottom of it. Can actually take this off if you want to. Then we go down to her traditional outfit. It's uh, as I was saying, it's fairly minimal. There's not really that much going on as such. I kind of want to have a deep dive on the uh, on the paint because the less detail there is on the figure, I really want to have a more close look at the paint. Which seems good for the most part, the lines are alright, there's a little bit of bleeding in the white but barely noticeable. And uh, I mean the good news is that everything on here is painted, you also have like another ribbon in the back. We got these armor parts, those are nicely molded. Also have a bit of a different paint than the black inside, you know it's kind of like she's she has some... Uh, arm pads on there and then you got the armor pads over it. It's a little bit of a different tone of black. I don't know how well you can see it on the camera, but it is there. Color doesn't really line up over there. Again, it's just minimal parts and I I just want to show you that, but um, <clears throat> it's not a valid complaint. And it's Ponsu time! Yeesh, it's not even really Ponsu, it's more like biker shorts, but however, it, she does have a nice butt. Also has a little bit of bleeding on it, but um, you know, it does the job, it does the trick. Just kind of disappointed. We haven't had puns of time in such a long time, and then it's just, you know, that. Anyway, going down to what looks to be stalking, so with some more armor on there. Um, it is nicely detailed, has a little bit of difference in color. And down to the feet with the toes. Doesn't have any toenails, but then again, like, I don't know if they have that much detail on the fate figures. And there you go. As for the articulation, it's mostly standard stuff. The hat does, you can tuck it in a little bit into the scarf. It does move to the back nicely enough. As you can tell, there is a big ball hinge and another ball that's packed into the back of the hat. Does also tilt side to side a little bit and does go all the way around without any trouble. We already had a look at the scarf. You have these ball hinges, which makes it go up and down and also you rotate it at the ball joint so you can get another angle. For the shoulder articulation, standard stuff, you have a ball hinge that goes into another ball that's in the chest area. So you can bring that up and down and you can rotate it also on the ball there. You also can swivel it on this piece. You do have another swivel here. You got standard ball hinge in the elbow, another ball hinge in the hand, goes up and down and also rotates freely. Chest area moves back and forth and this is kind of like a thing which uh, I didn't even mean to pull this out, but uh, there you go. I guess you can give it a little bit of a tuck. And then it moves out a little bit more. Let me zoom back, actually. But it does move back and forth. It does leave a gap, but it's really just kind of pull it back down, and it's okay. So the torso area, well, the chest area, it's kind of limited. 
but you also have some articulation in the torso so you can bring that one around all the way also tilt side to side and if you combine the two it does for some decent posing now for the legs it's one of these leg um, parts which you can pull out can extend and as such it moves forward very nicely it's kind of cut up over here with the skirt moves out to the sides and also goes to the back you do have a swivel in the uh, stocking so you can move that around got another ball hinge which is stuck over here in the knee move that backwards and finally a ball hinge in the foot which moves back and forth does tilt side to side and you actually also have a swivel in there I just noticed that have a swivel on the ankle that's kind of new but there you go and now arguably for the most important part of this figure the accessories starting off with the faces you got a shouting face next to uh, we got the smiling face on the figure as well um, if you also want to comment on how dry my fingers are uh, yeah I moisturize like three four times a day and they still look like that also then we got this kind of like this pale shocking face very good stuff then we got the swords you got the sheathed version she sheathed version i don't know how you pronounce that sheathed both swords obviously because this is the ascension version if you're getting the regular version you know the non dx version i think you're only getting this one if you want to put it in the hands without the top part you can just take that off and then pose her with the unsheathed sheathed short <laughs> unsheathed short what yeah okay i'm not listen uh, English is not my first language, so uh, whatever. Uh, they both have the same design for the most part. Well, no, actually, this, the top part is a little bit different. It's a little bit more uh, rectangular, and the other one's rounded as I run into my ring light and whatnot. But it does look very good. I like the detail in there, and the paint on it is also very clean. Got the nice metallic. And then for the hands, you got uh, open hands to, uh, well, there's the fist hands. Then there's the open hands to hold on the swords. Then there's this open hand to hold on to the she, she, she bleh, and then these open hands, which are um, just posing stuff, right? Then you got these little guys. I haven't even taken them out of the plastic, but let me do that. It's the same one. You got gold and silver versions of the Chibi Nobu, which are kind of spiky on top over here. It's not articulated. You can take them off the base if you want to, but uh, why would you? I really appreciate that you get the base. And it does look cool. I mean, it's a nice little accessory. Again, you got the exact same one in silver. And then, obviously, one of the most important aspects and something that Figma has been uh, trying out a little bit more, um, real cloth outfits. <gasps> you also got like a bendy wire in there for posability. It does look actually very nice. There's a little bit of detail on it. There's some holes in there, which um, I'm guessing that's on purpose. I mean, it looks like it's on purpose. Obviously, you have the hole in the back to connect it to the base so you got the coat of oats which is what is called precisely and again the wire is going on throughout the entire neck part goes around over here and the lower part if you're wondering about that and then you got the figma base and the figma back and the figma instructions kind of off to the side over here and i guess finally there's also like this uh, replacement pack for the hand and this one which you can put on the base if you want to Final thoughts, and I think this figure looks great, and I will already recommend it for all Fate fans. And uh, even if you're kind of curious about more Japanese style kind of warriors, samurais, ninjas, whatever you want to call it, I think this figure is pretty solid. However, I have one issue with it, and I don't get why. Well, I kind of get why money, but I, it feels kind of scummy to make the DX version with the coat, which to me arguably is the more interesting part of the figure. And if you're buying the regular version, you only get one sword and you don't get the coat. And that's like, what, 15 bucks or whatever? I rather would have had them add the coat to both versions and like, I don't know, leave out the Nobus or whatever. Because, quite frankly, I don't really care about it that much. What is attracting to me of this figure is the coat. Because it's something else, it's something different. We don't really have cloth. We don't really get that a lot. I know Figma is kind of trying it out with the Figma Stars collection, and there's going to be more of that, so that's fine. But just you know, don't make it the X version because of the coat. Because like the coat, everybody wants to give the coat to everybody. Anyway, anyway, that's gonna do it as usual. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget if you enjoyed this review, hit it up with a like and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for more figure reviews, card game stuff, and whatever Okita Soji wants.